Well, I think, I think we were also thrilled with the way that the first film, uh, you know, enchanted audiences around the world. That uh, to come, not to come back, would have been quite churlish. So uh, it's it's lovely to be in the company of the bear again. Well, um, Mr. Brown, of course, ended up in the last film having found his mojo again, and uh, you know, not being quite as straight jacketed and boring as uh, his his uh, life had been uh, since he's had children. He'd, he'd been very protective of them, and, and part of Paddington's uh, influence on the family was to release Mr. Brown from his rather staid, protective ways. Uh, we find him in the midst of a midlife crisis. Um, he gets passed over for promotion, starts dyeing his hair, and um, uh, wants to buy a fast car, uh, all those usual things of, uh, and, and get, try and get fit. So he takes up a, a, a new uh, discipline called chakrobatics, uh, which is a sort of a fusion of uh, Eastern, <laughs> Eastern traditions and uh, body bending. Well, well, Paddington is always uh, the, the, the most stable character in the film, really, because he, he never changes insofar as if ever mishap befalls him. He doesn't necessarily learn from it, but he just resets to positive all the time and everything is going to be all right. So when he sets his heart on um, uh, getting a present for Aunt Lucy and he needs to earn some pennies to, to, do, you know, to, to get the, enough money to buy it, he sets out to do lots of odd jobs around the area, and of course, this you know brings him into into contact with all sorts of people who live in in this very, as you say, multicultural community in um, around Windsor Gardens. Um, and it's delightful. You've got every everything everything from the everyone from the you know the local doctor to the uh, news agent who has a parrot on her shoulder all the time, the the bereaved uh, colonel or the rather sort of misanthropic colonel who has forgotten his sort of self respect and dignity and doesn't really shave and shuffles around in his in his dressing gown, and uh, there's the young law student who, who Paddington you know, hitches a ride with every morning on the back of her bike, and um, all these uh, characters in the community that Paddington touches upon or comes into contact with. So what is it to be British? I think it's to be quirky and tolerant um, and full of contradiction. and. Uh, the first film was, to an extent, a love letter to London. Let's face it, it was full of all those glorious chocolate box images you, that uh, overseas people, when they come to visit, want to go and tick the boxes of. Um, and this film underlines that with even, even uh, greater definition, um, because part of the plot involves going to some of the iconic landmarks around London. And um, it, it, yes, it, it, it absolutely draws on all the great strengths of, 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 of uh, British culture and all the all the quirks and quiddities of it all. Paul's contribution should, you know, can't be um, praised highly enough because it, it really is the fruition of what he's been thinking about and what takes place in his imagination. He goes into this strange sort of hard stair place, Paul. <laughs> you can tell, I think he's exactly like Paddington, where he's worrying away in his head about why he's not got, serving this scene properly. And then he'll come up with some a new way of doing things. Um, or we'll revisit a scene a few days later, and he'll say there's a bit there that isn't right. And um, and I, it's not a way I, I, you know, I don't have that imagination that he has, and I and I admire it hugely because it is, it is uh, always striving to be better and and uh, more cinematic and and uh, more entertaining. And he never loses his sense of fun in in, in it all. And I think, as I say, that is complemented by. Lindy Hemmings' uh, touch with the colours of the costumes and the, and the type of costumes and um, the progression of costumes as the mood changes through the film. Um, I remember in the first film when I started off literally wearing grey suits because Mr. Brown was so grey and dull and he ended up in sort of fiery red as he was climbing around the top of the uh, Natural History Museum. So we've got similar sort of patterns uh, through, through this film. And Gary Williamson's extraordinary and beautiful designs. I love, one of my favorites was in the first film, The Geographer's Guild, which was a, a stunning enough building in itself. But then when you see all the added touches, these strange pipes and uh, sort of almost steampunk type inventions that he'd added to it, gave it a, a wonderful classic, yet you could believe it still existed in the contemporary world. So Paul, I think, always starts from a, a sense that we must feel that this is, there is a reality here, but but wouldn't it be great to go into into, into nudge that world, um, and things like yes, like the 
the st the st that beautiful stairwell in the house. The number of people who said, I want to live in that house, you know. And that's a, that's a great tribute to Gary and Paul. I'm innocent. The master of disguise. If anyone can recognize a criminal, it's us.